Hello guys, my name is Prince and this is my center. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Post your comments and questions on my social media handles and I'll respond to it. This is the fifth video on the chapter sets. In the previous video, we looked at the properties of operation on sets. We also looked at ways of representing information on a Venn diagram. In this video, we are going to take an example on sets, then we will represent the information we will obtain on a Venn diagram. So let's look at the question. Given that P, Q and R are subsets of the universal set U, and U is given by S is such that X is greater than or equal to 1, and X is less than or equal to 16, P is given by S is such that S is a factor of 16, Q is given by S is such that X is a multiple of 4 less than or equal to 16 and R is given by X is such that X is greater than 11 and X is less than 16. 1. List the members of U, P, Q and R. 2. Find I, P intersection Q, I, I, P intersection R, I, 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 P intersection Q intersection I. R, sorry, I, V, P, intersection, Q, intersection, R, V, P, union, Q, union, R, V, I, P, union, Q, union, R, all complement. Then three, illustrate your answer on a Venn diagram. So let's start with the first one, listing the members. So we start with U. This is a set builder notation. In the second video, we learned how to list the members when a set border notation is given. So here, S is such that X is greater than or equal to 1 and S is less than or equal to 16. So which means that the upper limit is 1, the upper limit is 16 and the lower limit is 1. So we list the members between 1, whole numbers between 1 and 16. Then we move on to the next one. P is given by S is such that S is a factor of 16. So the members in set P are the factors of 16. So we list the factors of 16 and they are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. Now remember that P is a subset of the universal set U. So all the members in P must be in U. So when we check them, you can see that 1 is in U, 2 is in U, 4 is in U, 8 is in U and 16 is also in U. So it satisfies that condition. How, to, how do we find the factors of 16? Remember that the factor of a particular number, factors of a particular number are numbers that can divide that number without a remainder. So if you want the factors of 16, we are looking at numbers that can divide 16 without a remainder. And they are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. Q is given by multiples of 4 less than or equal to 16. So you are supposed to list the multiples of 4 less than or equal to 16. How do we find multiples of 4? Multiples of a number are the numbers obtained by multiplying that particular number by 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. So multiples of 16, you obtain them by multiplying 4 by 1, 2, 3, 4, and that is so we multiply 4 by 1 we get 4 4 by 2 we get 8 4 by 3 we get 12 4 by 4 we get 16 now remember that Q are multiples of 4 less than or equal to 16 so 16 is included and that is the limit we cannot go beyond that Q is also a subset of U so we have to make sure that all the members in Q are in U we can all see from here too that 4 is in U 8 is in U 12 is in U and 16 is also in U so it, it satisfies that condition also <coughs> sorry R is also given as a set builder notation and is given by S is such that S is greater than 11 and at the same time S is less than 16. So we are supposed to list the members between 11 and 16. Remember that 
11 and 16 will not be included because s is strictly greater than 11 and x is strictly less than 16. So those numbers will be 12, 13, 14, and 15. We have to also make sure that the members in R are all in the universal set since it is a subset of the universal set. So we can also see from here that 12 is in 16, 12 is in U, 13 is in U, 14 is in U, and 15 is also in U. So we have listed all the members of the sets U, P, Q, and R. Let's move on to the question 2. The first part of question 2, which is the I, says that we should find P intersection Q. Now I'm going to bring the pointer here so that I can show you some things. P intersection Q. So we are looking at members that are in both P and Q, and they are 4, 8, and 16. I, I says we should find P intersection R. So P intersection R. Now there is no member in P that is also in six in R. So P intersection R is a null set. We explained what a null set is in the first video. Q intersection R. Now Q intersection R means that we are looking at members that are in Q and the same time in R. And that member is 12. 12 is in Q at the same time in R. IV. IV says we should find P intersection Q intersection R. Now this is what it means. We want a member or members that are in P, Q and R. So that member will have to be in P at the same time in Q and at the same time in R. Now there is no member like that. 4 is in P and in Q but not in R. So it does not satisfy the condition. In the same way, 12 is in Q and in R, but not in P, so it does not satisfy the, 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 the condition. For a member to belong to P intersection Q intersection R, it must be in all the three sets. So P intersection Q intersection R is also an R set. Move on to the next one, which is P union Q union R. In the second video, we explained that to find the union of sets, all you need to do is to put all the sets under consideration together. So P union Q union R is given by putting P, Q and R all together. So we add the members of P, Q and R together. So we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. Remember that if a member appears twice, for example, 4 is in P at the same time in Q, we write it once. Move on to the next one, which is P union Q union R or complement. So we are looking at members that are in the universal set that are not in P union Q union R. Remember that this is P union Q union R. So all that we want is we are supposed to take these members out of the universal set. The remaining members are what we have in P union Q union R complement. So this is what I mean. To find the members in P union Q union R or complement, take the members of P union Q union R out of the universal set. The remaining members is what you have. So we take one out of the universal set. We take two out. We are going to take four out. We are going to take eight out. We will take 12 out, we will take 13, 14, and 15. The remaining members, which is 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, and 16, are what we refer to as P union Q union R or complement. We explain this in details in the third video, so you can go and watch it so that you get more information about this. Now we move on to the third part of our question, which is to represent our answer on a Venn diagram. Now this is how it's going to look like. So we are going to use the pointer to explain the individual regions. We begin with the set P. Now we can see that the set P is made up of this circle, the circle which I'm using the pointer to show you. So if all the members in set P 
must appear in this circle. Now we can see from this region that this particular region that is between P and K. So P intersection K comes in this region. Now we can see from here that P intersection K are 4, 8, and 16. So 4, 8, and 16 will be written in this region. Now when we come to this part, this part here represents members that belong to P alone. And we can see that they are 1 and 2. So throughout the whole set, we can see that 1 and 2 appears in only P. 1 and 2, they appear in only P. So you are going to write those members here. They belong to P alone. Now we move on to this set here, Q. You can see that members in set Q are 4, 8, 12, and 16. So when you go around the circle, you can see that the members there are 4, 8, 12, and 16. But as I said earlier on, 4, 8, and 16 are shared by both P and Q. Now 12 is also shared by both Q and R. So there are no members that, are, that belong to Q alone. So this region will be empty. We move on to the set R. Now you can see from the set R that the members are 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we can see from here that 12 is shared between both Q and R. So it must come here, Q intersection R. Now, 13, 14, and 15 belongs to R alone. So you are going to write those numbers in this region. Now, when you, this region is empty, that is P intersection R is empty because we, when we are solving, we saw that P intersection R is a null set. There was no member in P intersection R. So that region is going to be empty. This region here, which belongs to all the three regions, that is P intersection Q intersection R, is also empty. Because when we were solving, we saw that P intersection Q intersection R was a null set. So that region is also empty. Now, P intersection Q intersection R complements are 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, and 11. So you write those members here. They are members that are in the universal set, but are not in P union Q union R. Now you can see that after you've represented your information on the Venn diagram, when you add all the members in the universal set together, you are in the Venn diagram together, you are supposed to get the universal set. So you are going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. 15 and 16. So when you add all the members in the universal in the Venn diagram together, you are going to get the universal set. Take more examples on this. Follow the process that we used in this in this video and you'll be able to solve it. If you have any problem, interact with me on my social media handles on Facebook at Mars Center and on Instagram at Mars Center underscore SHS and I'll help you to understand it. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it was really helpful. In the next video, we are going to take practical problems and use a Venn diagram to solve them. We are going to take an example on a two-set problem. Bye-bye.